Hello guys, uh, welcome back to uh, the Get A Brew Kitchen. Um, if you watched the last episode, we were uh, brewing a, an extract American peel ale uh, with some steeping grains, uh, some fresh hops and some spray malt. Uh, today we're going to uh, bottle it. So we're going to give you a few options just on what to use, uh, cappers, caps and things like that there, but we'll get into that whenever we uh, start the video. Okay, so the first thing we had to do was to prime our beer. Um, the reason why we prime it is we add sugar uh, to the bottles before we add the beer, uh, and that adds carbonation to the beer. So the way I did it was uh, I got a pot on the stove. I added uh, 155 grams of our dextrose, um, then added some hot water, brought it to a boil. Um, with a sanitized bucket, I poured that into the bottom. Um, then with uh, a piece of tubing, which we also sanitized, um, we connected that to our original fermenter and um, transferred the beer from it on top of that sugar solution. Really simple stuff. Um, it does it all for you by the time it's transferred into the, 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 the bottling bucket, um, it's ready to start packaging it. Our buckets are multi-purpose. Um, I like to use them for washing my bottles as well. So we took the original fermenter that we had the beer in, we cleaned it, uh, filled it up with our Kemi Pro San, um, uh, 30 mils to 20 litres of water, uh, and then just started to sanitise our bottles. So now we're looking at packaging our beer. We've already sanitized about uh, 36 bottles uh, of our 500 ml. Um, uh, an alternative method of uh, priming would be our carbonation drops. So we have the brew form ones, which are uh, specific to different sizes, 33 or uh, 500 like we have here. Then we have our 1 kg carbonation drops and our mangrove jacks ones, and obviously the priming sugar, which we talked about earlier. Simple, you grab a bottle, um, you, you take the carbonation drop, Take it out of the bag, you put it in there, and you package your beer on top of it, or uh, pour your beer on top. Alternatively, you can take a level teaspoon of your dextrose and just add that to each bottle. It's a little more time consuming, but you know it means you're getting the exact quantity that you want into each individual bottle. But uh, like I said, um, for this particular uh, packaging um, or bottling uh, day, we're uh, batch priming so there. So. We're using the, the Bottle Drainer 50 today. It's a pretty, uh, it doesn't take up much space. Um, it's pretty convenient to have as well because you can reach for the bottle whenever you need it. Yeah, so uh, you can either uh, hand wash them um, or else you can use the, the eco rinser which we have here. Um, it's as simple as uh, putting some um, sanitizer in the bottom there and then put it down like that. And then that just sort of injects some uh, sanitizer into the bottle. Um, not a bad uh, thing to do just before you put beer into your uh, your bottle here. So we have uh, two different um, capping options here. We've got the uh, tabletop capper, which is uh, a step up from the uh, Vic capper, which we supply with all of our beginner beer kits. Um, but uh, this one here is uh, a little bit quicker to use. Um, uh, this one here, uh, very cheap, very uh, durable, um, does the job and it's simple to use as well. Just before we attach our bottling stick, which we have sanitizing in the bucket over there, I like to get a, a small bowl. Um, count out how many caps you're going to be needing for the, the quantity of beer that you're packaging. Um, add a few extra just in case you drop one or uh, something doesn't work out and then put it into a bowl with some sanitizer and that just means that's sanitized and ready to go when you're ready to start bottling. Right, let's start bottling. Uh, we'll get the uh, bottling stick out first. Um, that's been sitting sanitizing in our uh, bucket of Kemi Pro San, um, just give it a quick squirt with our squirty bottle, just make sure it's good to go. And then we attach it to the bottling tap or tap that you have in the front there. And it's, so it's spring mounted, um, you open up the tap here to let the beer in. Um, I would remove this as well just so it doesn't suck any chemicals in there. Give it a respray as well. So uh, we have two different bottles available uh, on our website for Get A Brood. We have the uh, swing top ones, which uh, come with the um, top already attached. These are very handy, um, reusable. Um, you don't need a capper to use them. It's just a matter of closing it off. But these are the 500 ml uh, brown glass bottles that we have on the website. We sell them in quantities of 12 um, and they're reusable. But yeah, they're great to use time and time again and they're excellent for packaging your beer and handling them out and sharing with your friends and family. So we've emptied the sanitizer out of the bottle. And then you take your bottle, and you add it to the bottling stick, and then you push it up until uh, the beer releases into the bottle. Um, at this stage, you just want to try to eliminate as much uh, contact that it has with oxygen. 
um, because that's uh, not good for it at this point. And then we put that on like that, close it off, and that's one done. So uh, while we're doing this, you just want to be conscious of what you're touching with your hands. So um, you know, anything that the, the beer touches has to be sanitized. Um, so that's your bottling stick, your bottles, hands, everything. Yeah, so we have a bottle filling stick in here, so you want to go just a little bit higher than you think because of the displacement that'll occur with the uh, bottling stick. It's not a bad shout as well. If you want to give the underside of that just another spray with your spray bottle. And then back on again, and that's another one done. Um, so we'll fill these up and then we'll start with the uh, 500 ml bottles that we're going to cap. Right, so that's us finished with the uh, swing top uh, bottles. We're going to move on to the 500 ml with the crown caps. Let's do uh, one bottle start to finish. So uh, we've washed these already, we've um, left them there to drain. Um, so you've got our caps nice and sanitized here in the bowl. Um, get your eco rinser for one last final um, spray. Again, into the bottle like we did with the swing tops. Um, ideally, you'll be at home in your kitchen. This will be waist height. Get a seat, it'll make things a lot easier for you. It'll be a lot more comfortable as well. Let's go to about there. And then we have the uh, Vic capper. This is supplied with all of our beginner beer kits. Um, very versatile, very easy to use. So the Vicks capper, it has two options on it. So if you see in here, there's two little um, pieces and they come out just by pushing it like that. And you'll see on there, one's for a high neck, which is what we have today. And then if you reverse it to that, slide it back in, that one is for a low neck. And the same happens on the other side there too. So it's just a matter of switching that out for whichever type of neck you're using. Um, all of our bottles are the uh, high neck, so we'll uh, start by adding a wee cap onto that and show you how it works. So we take a cap out of the bowl, set it on top, and then on, just push it down until it makes that sound. And you'll know it's closed because it'll have a wee dimple just on the top there. Um, just when you are at home, you'll have probably have your work surface there, so uh, when you're using this, Take your time, um, it's not a bad idea to maybe take a um, dishcloth maybe, set it down and uh, get your bottle from the drainer and use it that way. It just means it's not going to slip around anywhere, but safer, safer as well. So at home when I'm bottling my own beer, um, I like to do it in batches of 10. So you could get out you know, your uh, bottles, line them up. Um, it's a lot easier with two people. So if you can get one of your kids, friends, family, come around help out, it's a good way to, to get it done a lot quicker. So we'll do them batches in 10 and fill them and cap them and we'll show you how we get on. So uh, I'll fill, luckily Kuhn's just walked into the kitchen here so we're going to rope him into helping us out here. Um, I'm going to fill a few and uh, Kuhn's going to cap a few. Yeah, so uh, as you say, we use the Vic capper here. Uh, Kuhn just walked into the kitchen. Uh, you've seen how easy it is for someone who's never done it before, just to stick a cap on a bottle and close it off. Um, the next step up, in my opinion, would be the tabletop capper. It's the one I use at home. Um, it's uh, a little quicker. It's good to use, um, again, if you have a friend like Kuhn or whoever. Just a guy you know. Just a guy you know, yeah. I'm not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a bit quicker, um, you can get through your, your bottling day a, a bit faster. I do them in uh, st stacks of 10. So let's get one done with the tabletop capper. So this one's slightly different. Um, it's got two, two holes here. You can mount it to your work surface and your shed or garage, whatever. Um, but you can use it without doing that. So we'll show you here now. It's so it's set for the right height here. That's just a simple lever. All the way down until you hear that crunch and then turn it 180 degrees and then one more time.
Right, that's us finished there bottling. We've done the swing tops, the 500ml uh, with the crown caps. Uh, we've managed to get 37 bottles uh, packaged out of that um, fermenter. Um, so you can see how easy it is. There's no uh, nothing very difficult about the extract brewing. There's nothing very difficult about using the uh, you know, Vic capper and the tabletop capper. And thanks to Q&'s help, we got it all done in quick time. So uh, well, we're going to leave these uh, for two weeks. Uh, we'll keep them somewhere warm, uh, room temperature for uh, the, the first week and then we'll place that somewhere cold and then we'll crack one open and see what it tastes like. Okay guys, we're back. Uh, a few weeks after the American Pale Ale extract kit that we brewed, um, we've got a few bottles set up here, uh, the swing tops and the crown capped ones. Um, we're going to pop a few open, try them, see what we think. Um, Hugh, if you want to grab a swing yeah, top, I'll it. get one of these. Oh, it's well carbonated anyway. That's a good sign. Ooh. Smells good. It's a nice colour as well. So there you go. Oh, it's a bit of the air of that. Yeah. It's a bit feisty. <laughs> yeah, Kuhn pouring aside, these look pretty good. So uh, I think we're going to have a wee taste. And... Yeah, nice. It's very family. <laughs> <sighs> yep, that's pretty good. Mm. Um, nice and citrusy, light. Um, it's a, a good peel ale and it just goes to show with a few uh, fresh grains, um, some fresh hops, uh, good yeast and a spray malt. It's very easy to make and it uh, delivers pretty tasty beer, so it does. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's um, very light, uh, quite refreshing. I actually enjoy this on a nice hop. Yeah, it's got a nice pleasant maltiness mm. as well. Mm, yeah. Citrusiness is coming through. Yeah, it was uh, the, the, the tea bags that we used in it were the Centennial and Cascade um, for the uh, aroma and flavour and then just the Aurora for that nice uh, bitterness that you get with that too. But uh, yeah, it's, it's what, what yeast were you using in this? Uh, Brian 97, so okay. a nice clean yeast, so it really right. shows off the malt and the uh, mm. hops. A little bit of extra body, a little bit of uh, extra flavour, um, definitely fresher, um, just more vibrant than, mm. than what you would expect from a, a standard beer kit. So guys, that's us. Um, as you can see um, from the uh, brew day that we had and the bottling, um, the link should be available uh, above. And we hope this shows you with uh, you know very minimal gear, minimal effort, that uh, you can make a very, very tasty beer and package it at home. Um, so happy brewing and we hope to see you soon.